I want to welcome you to the River Stewards Recognition Luncheon, a name that just rolls right off the tongue. The River Stewards, say it with me, the River Stewards Recognition Luncheon. Yes. <laughs> you know, I was, uh, I was, well, paging through a copy of the Convenience Store Monthly uh, before the program began, and if you haven't read it yet, it's a, it's a fascinating read, but uh, it, it reminded me of a few things that are very important to this institution. And first, let me introduce myself. My name is Don Shelby. <laughs> Hold on. No, that's not right. I'm Tom Middlebrook, and I'll be at table five. Sorry about that. Um, and on behalf of the board of directors of the James J. Hill Reference Library, I would like to welcome you to our humble home. Um, as I was saying, reading through Convenience Store Monthly, it kind of reminded me that our institution is at a turning point right now where because the world started carrying the library around in their back pocket, we found it necessary to reinvent ourselves. And part of that reinvention was some of the music that you just heard. Uh, we have a monthly show here called the Real Phonic Radio Hour with Eric Koskinen and Frankie Lee and J.T. Bates, some of the musicians that we're playing. Thank you, feel free. <laughs> the Real Phonics Show is a celebration of poetry and literature and Americana music that we do every third Thursday. So we have one coming up this coming week on Thursday night with Haley Bonner. And it's a two hour show and thanks to the support of people like our very own mayor, Chris Coleman, We've had a wonderful first year, and we're very appreciative of that. We are also engaged in a project called Studio E, which is an entrepreneurial workshop where we are working with business leaders from all across the country in four-day seminars to develop entrepreneurial thinking in their businesses and to develop a greater sense of creativity in the workplace. Uh, so essentially, we found that the library isn't tied to the medium of a book. Instead, it's tied to the idea of creating communities and building content out of those communities. And in that, we're very pleased to be working with the Riverfront Corporation as well. And I get to say this now because Patrick Sieb and I have been working on a project the last few months called Conversations on the City. And because I beat him to the punch, now I can drop the whole project in his lap. So thank you very much <laughs> for that. And to all of the honorees here today, congratulations, and thank you for your work in developing our community. And now, I'd like you all to enjoy a lunch that I got up very early and prepared especially for each one of you. Thanks so much for coming. Good afternoon, everyone. Is it good? Is it good? OK. I have been told that this is a very, very difficult crowd to kind of gather their attention. And so if you could bear with uh, me for just a few moments. I was uh, Jim Bradshaw is my name. I serve as the current chair of the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation. I was sitting next to David Lilly. And, uh, and I said to David, I said, well, maybe we can get ourselves back on track time-wise because when we were all trying to be seated, I noticed, well, we might be about 10 minutes off here, so I will try not, I'll try to stick to the script. Um, as I told you, I'm currently the chair of the Riverfront Corporation on behalf of the entire board and staff. I'd like to welcome all of you here today. What started as a very modest idea a few years ago has grown into a very important part of our tradition. So we gather here during this holiday season as friends and partners, colleagues and collaborators to tip our hat and to recognize a special few who have made extraordinary contributions to our field of work. I can't imagine a more worthy trio than the three who will be acknowledged today. I will turn to several board members to assist me and help me with this uh, moment, and that will come up very shortly. But before we do that, 
I want to call out some very important guests in the room. I know everybody's important in the room here, but these are folks that have been and continue to be city builders and community builders. First, I'd like to ask all the elected and appointed officials to please stand. Don't be bashful now. Now I'd like the uh, current and former board members of the Riverfront Corporation and past river stewards to please stand and be recognized. We are grateful to all of you for all of the work that you have done and all of the work that you continue to uh, provide to this community. Uh, this is really special. You know, I look around the room and I mean, these are, you, you all are people that make a difference in this community. And what is great to see is the, the conversation that is happening prior to us being seated today. So again, thanks to, to all of you. The St. Paul Riverfront Corporation is blessed to have strong relationships with so many individuals organizations in the community is through collaboration with the city, St. Paul, with foundations and corporations and with fellow nonprofits that we were able to do our work. Let me briefly highlight some of the work over the past year. Together with our city partner, St. Paul, we have reaffirmed the work of the Design Center, positioned it to serve not only the downtown and river, the Central Corridor and other parts of the city as well, and neighboring communities. We're currently, we're growing the Great River Gathering as the St. Paul's annual town dinner. And this past year, we worked with more than a dozen organizations to incorporate the week-long community dialogue known as the Charles Landry Residency. We are assisting the Payne, Maryland Partnership in its vision for a new multi-purpose community center on the city's east side. And we're growing our knowledge and reach through our work beyond the city of St. Paul as a host to the Rose Architectural Fellow, a Massachusetts-based program, as a leader for the Midwest Regional Session of the Mayor's Institute for City Design, a Washington, D.C.-based training institute, and in work with Wyzetta's Lakefront and Minneapolis River First. The Greater Stillwater Chamber is also called upon our staff to discuss their riverfront as it develops and to learn from us. As we look forward to 2013, we continue these traditions and look forward to new practices. Again, our work is done in partnership and, and with so many others, too numerous to mention. But today, today, uh, we are going to be recognizing three very well-deserving people. But before we do that, I'm going to introduce all of you to and invite on stage and introduce Michelle Barnes. She's a visual, the theatrical, and spoken word artist who will share her interpretation of why individuals matter. And she is known as, so if you Google it, you'll find her listed as Michelle B. So please welcome Michelle B. Where are you, Michelle? everyone to make sure the whole sound business is working okay can everyone hear me yes. clearly all right good morning good afternoon it's 12 30 right okay city building city planning urban design Investment, analysis, finance, management, development, revitalization. The commonality is work. Work, the definition of work. 
the product of an applied force moving an object through distance. Work, the product of an applied force moving an object through distance. Formula, work equals force over time. Formula, work equals force over time. Force over time, working over time to achieve the next deadline, working over time to accomplish the specified goal. Work, the product of an applied force moving an object through distance from one place to another from one place to another, moving the plan from one place to another, moving the idea, moving an entire business, moving an entire organization from one place to another. Machine, a device that changes a force, a device that changes the size, distance, and direction of a force. Machine a device that changes a force. Machine, a person that changes a force. A person that changes the size, distance, and direction of a force. Machine, changing the size, changing the capacity, expanding, expanding, changing the size. Changing the size of one's work, expanding the space, expanding the surface area over which one's work is felt. Machine, changing the distance. Changing the distance, changing the distance over which a force acts. Machine, changing direction. Changing direction. Changing direction, realizing that this way is no longer working. Realizing that this way takes too long. Changing direction. Realizing that this way is simply inefficient. Changing direction. Realizing that this way, deciding that this way is the direction we should be moving. Work. The applied force moving an object through space, through time from one place to another. When can one feel that their work has truly been powerful, efficient, enough? Can one ever feel that their work has truly been enough? Acknowledgement is here. Acknowledging the power of one person with several hands, busy moving, busy moving, putting things together, busy moving, separating, rearranging, busy moving, all hands on deck busy moving, every single part of the brain on deck. Busy moving, working, 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 working while awake, working through sleep, working while awake, working through sleep, working, 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 rebuilding, working. When can one feel that their work has truly been powerful? When can one feel that their work has truly been powerful when they are busy moving at a constant, busy moving at a constant rate, work not often recognized, busy moving, details of their work not widely publicized, but quietly there, providing, offering, still working, providing, offering, producing. When can one feel that the product of their applied force over time has truly been powerful? When can one feel that the product of their applied force over time has truly been powerful? Acknowledgement is here, now, with us. The acknowledgement is here, now, with us, are the ones who transcend to new dimensions of success. With us are the ones who transcend to new dimensions of success. Thank you.
Wow, what a delightful piece. Let's give this young artist, Michelle B., another round of applause. I'm Ann Hunt. I'm the Environmental Policy Director for Mayor Chris Coleman, and I'm here today as a member of the Board of Directors of the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation. I have the distinct pleasure to be able to introduce our first of three honorees tonight. Paige Coles is well known in our community for her work at the Children's Theater, at Planned Parenthood, at a Grey Wolf Press. Paige is always elegant, poised, and engaged. I know her as a go-to person on river issues. Just last fall, when Interior Secretary Ken Salazar was here to visit the Mississippi National River, and Rec river Recreation Area, I do know how to say that, <laughs> um, say it twice, the Mississippi National River Recre and Recreation Area, um, the National Park Service wanted the community leaders to gather with the Secretary of the Interior along with Governor Dayton and some other dignitaries. And they were gonna be on a pontoon boat to tour the Mississippi. Paige was bundled up with work boots on and gloves and she enthusiastically um, showed off our great river valley to all the people there with the knowing guide that she is. Paige has also earned her, she earned her spot on that boat for years of volunteering with the Trust for Public Land. She was a founding member of Trust for Public Lands Board in Minnesota, and she was instrumental in formalizing that the TPL's charter here in Minnesota would be focused on the Mississippi, as well as the North Woods and city parks. For those two program areas, the river and the city, they were expressed in TPL's most recent work with the Bruce Bento Nature Sanctuary. In the work page, rolled up her sleeves and assisted others, namely the Lower Phelan Creek Project, as well as the Dayton's Bluff, Bluff neighborhood in realizing their vision. It's not to say that Paige is not a visionary herself. She is. With, with the, uh, while the idea of the Gateway Park connecting downtown Minneapolis to the river is now a commonly concepted idea, Paige was encouraging community leaders to consider this years ago when the concept of a small park in front of the new Minneapolis Public Library was first discussed. Paige epitomizes think globally and act locally. She has risen to the national prominence as the chair of the San Francisco based Trust for Public Lands, where she has influenced national conversations about, the, about rivers, and she applies that work to here in St. Paul. Most recently, Paige has been a vociferous, is that the word we want to say? Yes, a very formidable advocate for the Frogtown Farms project here in St. Paul, which will be, when fully recognized, yes, we should clap for Frogtown Farms. <laughs> But when, when that project is fully recognized, it will connect that neighborhood to the Mississippi River along the Victoria Park, or Victoria Street. For these and many unmentioned contributions, the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation, I want you all to join me in recognizing Paige Coles as the 2012 River Steward. Small token comes afterwards, apparently. <laughs> I have to sing for my supper before I get my small token. <laughs> Happy to do it. Thank you all so much for this honor. I teased Patrick saying I'd cut down my 20-minute speech to a 15-minute speech, and I knew he wouldn't mind. He gave me a minute. So this will be brief. I really feel so privileged to be able to work with so many others in this community to protect the natural assets that are so much a part of Minnesota and who we are as a state. And we're protecting them not just for ourselves, but also for our children and current generations. Uh, sorry, future generations. We're the current generation, future generations. There is nothing more important than we could be doing. I know there are a lot of important things to be doing, but for our future 
and the future of our children to protect our natural assets is uh, a very worthy endeavor. And as I've said to several of you already today, the work itself is the reward. Uh, the Mississippi River and its watershed are treasures for our city, our region, our country, the world. And uh, you know, Mississippi River is one of the things you can see from space. It really is a world-renowned spot. I consider myself so lucky to be able to live in such close proximity and to have the opportunity to act as a steward in this way. Thank you very much. Well, we presented the board, we presented Paige a lovely photo of the Bruce Vento Nature Sanctuary done by our own local artist, Leo Kim. So I'd like to bring up to Virginia Stringer to the podium now. I know we're all kind of in close quarters here. Virginia Stringer served as the past chair of the Riverfront Corporation's Board of Directors, and she's inter um, here today to introduce our next uh, honoree. Please welcome Virginia Springer. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Good. I'm delighted to be among my fellow supporters of the Mississippi River it's just a great place to be and you're wonderful people to be with and I'm very honored to introduce our next recipient. You know, long before the recent joint effort between Minneapolis and St. Paul to establish the greater MSP and before a shared transportation agenda and before co-submittals for national events such as the Republican National Convention and even before the mayors of the two cities had each other's phone numbers. Jay Coles was advocating for a regional approach to the Mississippi River. I remember when Jay first described the opportunity for the Mississippi River becoming the central park of the Twin Cities, and he's been working towards that end ever since. It's difficult to say precisely when Jay began to make his mark on the Mississippi River. Perhaps it was in the early 1990s when he chaired the Wabasha Bridge Task Force. Its purpose was to study design options and financial feasibility. But its greatest accomplishment may have been the unveiling of the pent-up demand for our reclaiming the Mississippi River. Jay was swept up in a flood of enthusiasm, becoming a leader in what someday will be known as our river area era. In his own wonderful style, he led, and I can speak to this personally, he led the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation to new heights, sometimes by gentle nudging, and sometimes by not so very gentle nudging, <laughs> but always leading as he chaired our board and co-chaired the fundraising campaigns for Harriet Island, Landmark Plaza, and the lighting of the Stone Arch Bridge. Now, Jay's commitment to the Grand Excursion 2004 may have exceeded all others. <laughs> he spent five days on the Mississippi Queen in Hannibal, Missouri. I'm sure there's many stories from those times, Jay. But they were awaiting high waters to recede so the mighty Queen could pass under this very, very low bridge. When Jay's tenure on the Riverfront Corporation board came to an end, he quickly put his energy toward the Itasca project, and as you know, that's made all kinds of inroads in our greater metropolitan community. Just an amazing effort, and he co-chaired, among other things, its transportation initiative. Today, he's a friend of the St. Paul Public Library and on the board of the St. Paul Public Schools Foundation, but his heart has always been with the river. No doubt influenced by Paige's passion for new urban green space, 
Today, he co-chairs the Gateway Committee to create new park space connecting downtown Minneapolis to guess what? The Mississippi River. <laughs> hmm, does that sound a little bit like Landmark Plaza? <laughs> but perhaps the best evidence that he hasn't given up on the idea of the Mississippi River as the central park of the Twin Cities, Jay has become an active member of the Mississippi River Fund, an organization whose mission is to build support, just think of it, for our 72 mile stretch of the Mississippi River from Coon Rapids to Hastings. For all that he has done, and for all that we know he will do, the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation is very, very proud to call Jay Coles our 2012 River Steward. Well, I resent the fact that this is occasionally referred to as a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> it ain't over yet. Uh, I also must say, with, with every word that uh, is directed at me, I find myself thinking of everyone in this room and so many others who were there with me at, at every moment of accomplishment. And so I want to just recognize that as much as uh, I, I can appreciate that, that I have had some wonderful successes personally. This really, uh, for me, is an opportunity to remember the whole community, the whole collaboration uh, that led to our successes uh, over the past two decades that I've been involved. I also want to very specifically, uh, I, I've lived in St. Paul about 20 years, and when I moved into my neighborhood, uh, getting to know the neighbors, I asked one of uh, my neighbors, uh, whom I, I respected and, and wanted to hear from, David Lilly Sr., what he thought was an important thing to focus on in St. Paul. What, what was a way to get to know St. Paul and, uh, and to contribute to the future? And he very quickly, and uh, without a lot of explanation, just said, the Mississippi River. And it was one of the great pieces of advice I've ever gotten. For me, the Mississippi is our uh, most powerful resource here in St. Paul. It is an endless uh, source of stories. Uh, it has shaped our commerce. It has shaped our recreation. Uh, it is the uh, source of our uh, bonds with this piece of land, with this place, and as we've come to appreciate, uh, at least I have, uh, one develops very powerful bonds with the geography that one knows, and we have one of the great stretches, this great S-shaped bend in the river is a spectacular uh, renewable resource. It brings uh, joy to me and I hope to you. I look forward to this work continuing for many years to come. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay. I'm very pleased. Sorry, I've got a hoarse voice today. I'm very pleased to present you with this Leo Kim photo of the Mississippi River looking from Pikes Island. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. That's just it's so great to see both the Coles recognized today, well deserved. But we have another recipient, and I'm going to introduce a board member, Dan McGinnis, to introduce the recipient. And so Dan has been on the Riverfront Corporation board for some time, and I think we all know him as being a huge advocate of the river as well.
Thank you, Virginia. Uh, it's been a very great honor for me to serve with Virginia and our other fellow board members here uh, on the board of the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation. Uh, that's not where you usually find me. Um, these days, I'm usually out on the river in my John boat. And one day this summer, I was sitting out on my John boat, right out here in the middle of the river, uh, kind of between the Wabasha Street Bridge and the High Bridge, and it was a real calm day. And I looked into the water, and reflected back at me was a mirror image of St. Paul and its waterfront. A panorama that started at the High Bridge, swept around through downtown, lower town, Dayton's Bluff, then across the open water to the airport, barge terminals, the west side, Harriet Island, and back to the High Bridge again. In that reflection of our city, I saw not only a diverse landscape, a mix of natural and urban, but a truly global diversity of people, bringing their families and cultures to this place we call home. And I began to appreciate one of the great strengths of St. Paul, the diversity of its people, which increasingly is being reflected in the diversity of its leadership. So I'm really pleased, I, from the bottom of my heart, I am pleased to honor one of those leaders, Wei Ming Liu, whose early vision and persistent leadership initiated the rejuvenation of St. Paul's Riverfront in Lower Town and the Bruce of Antoine Nature Sanctuary. Wei Ming grew up in an architect's family in Shanghai and Nanjing, China. His studies and practice took him around the world before he finally launched a three-decade career in St. Paul as leader of the newly established Lower Town Redevelopment Corporation, and that was in 1979. Arguably, arguably, his visionary work, River Garden, spawned a whole generation of work along the entire Mississippi River. It resulted in a new way of thinking about how the downtown and river should be treated as one. And Bruce Venter Nature Sanctuary is but one manifestation of this concept. Without his passionate voice, we would not be celebrating the renovation of the Union Depot. He envisioned its potential long before others and fought off plans to turn the venue into a trucking facility for a U.S. post office. Representative Betty McCollum once said about Wei Ming that he is, quote, a master who understands that the human connection to space and place is what defines a living city. It makes community and shapes urban life, unquote. Perhaps it's fitting that I conclude with some words from Wei Ming himself. In a recent writing, he said, seeking a balance between new and old, east and west, economic development and environmental protection, thus may we build a creative, livable, and sustainable world. Thank you, Wei Ming. Thank you, Wei Ming Liu, for all your contributions to our community, and we're pleased to honor you on behalf of the St. Paul Riverfront Corporation with our River Steward Award for 2012. Thank you so much. One can uh, never predict one's life. And, uh, and when I first got the job to come back to St. Paul, uh, this was a three to six years of possibility of a job, but never expect to stay for 26 years. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. I never expect to, to uh, receive this kind of honor because there's so much as I'm owed to so many people. So when Dan called me to, about this award, at first I really hesitated, and nothing in Lower Town was ever accomplished by the corporation alone. And on a second thought, however, that this gives me an opportunity to thank the many partners that we are in debt to. 
It was most heartening to be at the Union Depot uh, last week and seeing the beautiful restoration and the, the smiling crowd. Uh, without the historic designation, the stopping the post office expansion on the riverfront at a certain point, and the Ramsey County and the, the Locate Task Force, that hard work, the Congresswoman Betty McCollum's leadership, City of St. Paul's support, and the Arden Hills could, could have stopped this whole relocation of post office, Depot would never be restored. Uh, of course, Riverfront Corporation and Lower Town, together, we also co-host the visit of the Amtrak president one year. I think uh, Patrick still remember that. Happy, now we can see that Amtrak will be back next year. So behind every rehabilitation in Lower Town, uh, there is a story and many partners I, I couldn't really tell them all today. For the, the, the reclamation of Brownfield into Bruce Vento Nature Sanctuary, we had 25 partners, including the Trust for Public Lands, Audubon Society, and DNR, PCA, and the leadership and dedication of Kathy Lantry, Carol Carey, and the cable staff of, of Sarah Clark, Amy Middleton, and the creative creation of Marjorie Pitts and Don Genji, just to, just to name them. I couldn't include all of them. Uh, redevelopment often, uh, unfortunately, chase away many artists, thanks to the persistent effort of the city, the artists, the art space. Even after three failure, we never gave up. Then the first artist housing was created and that rest is history. Today, not only 500 artists are there, but many art organizations like Public Art St. Paul and uh, State Art Board, Zygus Quartet, and now, believe it or not, Museum of American Art just joined the community as well. So time does not give me to, to thank everyone. In fact, many of them right here. Um, it was St. Paul's initiative and the George Latimer Russ Ewald's dedication, McKnight generosity, that actually create the instrument for partnership, the Lower Town Redevelopment Corporation. And so that, that this long dedication of its board member, uh, including Phil Nason, Bob Hess, Dick Slay, I'm just naming a few, which really helped to build this urban village out of empty warehouse and parking lot in the late 70s. So to finish it up, the city building really nev never have a completion date. As one phrase is finished, another already began. So I do hope in the next urban village that St. Paul is building, artists will not be chased away. Creative spirit will flourish ever more. And the uh, Vento Sanctuary will be connected with the lower landing. Interpret Center will be built as a great place for nature and cultural activity. St. Paul would be an ever more livable, creative, and sustainable city. Thank you very much. I'm really pleased to present also uh, to Wei Ming a print from Leo Kim. It's of arguably the smallest tributary to the Mississippi River, the little stream that flows through Mears Park. <laughs> In Lower Town, of course. Thank you so much. I'd like to uh, now introduce, for some concluding remarks, a fellow Irishman uh, from St. Paul, uh, a fellow river rat, and our mayor, Chris Coleman. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you here. Uh, first of all, let's give a thanks to uh, the board of the Hill Library and Tom and everybody for allowing us to come into this beautiful space. 
I, I, I will make a plug because this is one of my favorite things that happens now in St. Paul, and that is our, our, our radiophonic, uh, our, our realphonic radio hour, and this week is particularly great. Uh, Haley Bonner, spectacular artist, uh, this is going to be great. And one of the things I really want to do is to have this room uh, turn people away on those nights because it just it has become such a thing. So if you haven't been to a show, if you've been to a show, you know you want to come back. If you haven't been to one, uh, come this Thursday if you can. Uh, give early Christmas presents, whatever it is. This is really spectacular. Uh, Patrick uh, is selling tickets. He gets a cut off of each one, I think. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it really is spectacular. <clears throat> you know, the, uh, the, our great spoken word artist, Michelle B., uh, asked the question, how will one know when their work has truly been powerful? So I want to rephrase that just a little bit and answer that. How will we know when our work has truly been powerful? We'll know our work has truly been powerful. We do know that our work has truly been powerful when we can gather here at this beautiful space on a beautiful day to honor people that have given so much time and so much service uh, to this community in so many different ways. We know that our work has truly been powerful when folks like Paige and Jay, who have so many different places that they can give of their time, so many different ways that they can contribute to this community, decide that the most important thing that they can do is be a part of the revitalization of the riverfront in the city of St. Paul and in Minneapolis. We know that our work has been powerful when someone like Wayming Liu can stand like a proud father looking at the tens of thousands of people that came into the depot last weekend for the, for the rebirth of that incredible facility uh, and just stood there with a smile without need for recognition uh, but was so proud of that because he knew that he had been there at the beginning of that effort. Uh, we know our work has been powerful when a hockey guy from the east side named Jim McDonough uh, can send so much of his time and energy to, and devote it to restoring that beautiful facility in Lower Town that took its place among the great buildings of the city of St. Paul. We know our work is powerful when someone from Minneapolis comes to St. Paul for dinner and not just because they couldn't get a reservation at La Belle Vie. <laughs> we know our work is powerful when we can tell generations that we have preserved the river, we have connected the river, and we have done what we could to ultimately make St. Paul and this community a better place. But I think the way that we most will know that our work has been powerful, when it no longer matters who is in this room, when it no longer matters whether it's Paige or Jay or Weiming or any of the others of you that have been honored as river stewards, we will know our work is powerful when the work is carried out by future generations, when the same level of commitment that we bring to this effort is brought by our children, our grandchildren, and future generations for many generations to come. And ultimately, we know that our work has been powerful when we look at what is happening in the city of St. Paul. And we know that the resurgence and the renaissance of this city, the articles in the paper that talk about the different sense of what is happening in this community is taking place before one person rides the right, right, light rail line into downtown, before one pitch is pitched at the new regional ballpark, before one bag of groceries is bought at Lund's, and yet we have created something where those new buildings have a firm foundation upon which to be built. This is an amazing effort that we have undertaken. People before us, people that are with us, and people yet to come. Our work is powerful because we had a vision, we had a dream, and we knew that we could do better by our river, that we could do better by our community, and we could do better for all generations to come. Thank you for being stewards of the river. We honor three today. We've honored many in the past. We are all stewards of the river. We all are protectors of this great asset, but we are all builders of the future of St. Paul. Our work is powerful. We have much work to do. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thanks to all for being here today and in enjoying the opportunity of honoring uh, those that have really, really made a difference in this community. So again, there will be music that will close uh, with Real Phonics. And thank you, Tom Middlebrook, and all of the folks from the James J. Hill uh, Reference Library. So again, have a great day, and thank you much. <laughs>